Breakthrough discoveries require sophisticated science. At Texas Biomedical Research Institute, scientific discoveries are made every day. As experts in infectious diseases, our scientists are searching for new diagnostics, treatments, and cures for pathogens such as malaria and tuberculosis to emerging infections like COVID-19. We aim to understand the basic biology of human disease and the microbes that cause them. More than 75 years ago, a 26-year-old philanthropist and businessman named Tom Slick Jr. had the idea to build a city of science on the western fringes of San Antonio, Texas. Through his vision, Tom founded Texas Biomed, along with the Southwest Research Institute and the Mind Science Foundation. Tom was a visionary. He wanted Texas Biomed to conduct research in medicine, biology, and agriculture for the purpose of advancing the frontiers of knowledge. The Institute has since evolved into a pioneering research facility with more than 65 PhD scientists who specialize in a vast array of research areas, from virology and immunology to parasitology and aging, as well as cardiovascular disorders and much more. At any given time, more than 200 research projects are occurring throughout the Texas Biomed campus. Texas Biomed employees are proud of the work we do, and we look forward to sharing with you parts of our campus and our work over the next few minutes. Let's get started. The Earl Slick Research Center is one of several buildings dedicated to both administrative and laboratory space. Constructed in 2014, the 70,000 square foot complex supports 15 research laboratories. At a cost of $27 million, the building was 100% donor supported and serves as a gentle reminder of the Institute's accomplishments and history. Upon entering, visitors will see beautiful art adorning the walls, as well as artistically etched glass windows. As we move from the Earl Slick Research Center, we want to take you into some of our labs. Some of these labs, in fact, you wouldn't see on the walking tour, because these labs require months of training and the highest safety levels of protective equipment to step foot inside. Let's take a look. Biosafety levels are used to identify protective measures needed in laboratory settings. These designations outline specific practices, safety, and facility requirements to protect workers, the environment, and the public. Activities and projects conducted in biological laboratories are categorized by their biosafety level. The levels are BSL-1, BSL-2, BSL-3, and BSL-4, which is the highest maximum level of containment. Texas Biomed has BSL-2s and 3s, as well as a BSL-4 laboratory. BSL-2 laboratories are used to study moderate-risk infectious agents, or toxins, that pose a risk if accidentally inhaled, swallowed, or exposed to the skin. Its design requirements include hand-washing sinks and eye-washing stations in case of accidents, similar to working in a lab at a college or university. In this lab, researchers must wear gloves, eye protection, and lab coats. Some of Texas Biomed's BSL-2 projects include work on HIV, Zika, malaria, and schistosomiasis research. BSL-3 laboratories are used to study infectious agents or toxins that may have a vaccine or therapy, but are still not things you would want to contract, such as tuberculosis and now COVID-19. Researchers perform all experiments in biosafety cabinets that use carefully controlled airflow or sealed enclosures to prevent exposure. BSL-3 laboratories are designed to be easily decontaminated. Other engineered safety features include the use of two self-closing or interlocked doors, sealed windows and wall surfaces, and filtered ventilation systems that suck air into the labs through filters rather than blow air out into hallways. The labs must also have access to equipment to decontaminate laboratory waste, including an incinerator, an autoclave, and other methods. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, worn in the BSL-3 setting includes a powered air purifying respirator, or PAPR, a Tyvek suit, double or triple gloves, and booties. 
ESL4 laboratories are used to study infectious agents or toxins that are life-threatening and for which no vaccine or therapy is available. The laboratories incorporate all BSL-3 features and occupy safe, isolated zones within a larger building or may be housed in a separate, dedicated building. Access to BSL-4 laboratories are carefully controlled and require significant training. At Texas Biomed, we use both biosafety cabinets and a device called the BioBubble to conduct research with animals within the lab space. All work with infectious agents or toxins is done in the biosafety cabinet with carefully designed procedures to contain any potential contamination. In addition, the laboratory space is designed to also prevent contamination of other spaces. All researchers and animal caretakers who enter the lab must wear a full laboratory suit. These full-body, air-supplied suits are the most sophisticated type of personal protective equipment. All personnel must shower before exiting the laboratory and go through a series of procedures designed to fully decontaminate themselves before leaving. Research in the BSL-4 is done under strict rules and regulations like the other laboratories. Our labs conduct research with the Ebola virus, Marburg, and other hemorrhagic fever pathogens that are lethal to humans. Texas Biomed is truly exceptional, and not just because of the labs it has and the people who work here, but we are home to some truly unique heroes. Texas Biomed houses the Southwest National Primate Research Center, one of only seven national centers for animal research with non-human primates, or monkeys. Texas Biomed is the only place in the country to house both a BSL-4 lab and National Primate Research Center. Animal research plays a crucial part in the development of medical, veterinary, and scientific breakthroughs. At the Southwest National Primate Research Center, or SNPRC, we focus on the well-being and comfort of the animals in our care. We believe laboratory animals deserve to be treated with respect, care, and compassion. The SNPRC is part of a national network of dedicated teams who fight diseases. The SNPRC's mission is to improve global community health through innovative biomedical research with non-human primates. The center was established as a National Primate Research Center in 1999 and is the only one not associated with a university. Baboons, marmosets, and rhesus macaques make up the colonies at SNPRC and number near 2,500. We also house a small number of chimpanzees, although they are no longer used in research. Monkeys and humans share very similar immune systems, reproductive systems, and brain structures, and more than 90% of our genes. Baboons have been housed on the Texas Biomed campus since the 1950s. We have the largest captive baboon colony in the world, with nearly 1,000 baboons. Here we see a troop of male baboons in a six-acre enclosure we call the corral. The walls of this structure are 12 feet tall and are slightly sloped in design. It's home to 160 male baboons aged 2 to 10 years old. You will see many different structures and cement culverts. These allow the baboons to climb and hide and provide shade as well as allow baboons to perch. All around the corral are small windows for the animals to look out and to feed. On every window, there is a feeding trough with monkey biscuits, a completely nutritionally balanced kibble. Each window alternates between a feeding and a watering station. This serves to prevent competition for food as well. The baboons will also receive grains or produce once a day. The baboons at the SNPRC get a wide variety of enrichment, like grapes or lentils. Anything you like to eat, these animals also eat. Though baboons are omnivorous, our animals are not fed meat. On special occasions or holidays, the animal care staff will provide the animals with special treats. Here, you see our baboons eating pumpkins they received for Halloween. Throughout our history, the SNPRC has housed five different types of baboons, or the scientific name Papio hamadryas, olive, yellow, chakma, red, and hamadryas. Though much of what you see in our colony today are hybrids of two species, of yellow and olive. When fully mature, these animals can weigh up to 60 to 75 pounds and can live up to 30 years of age. They are found in various parts of Africa, except for the deserts and dense jungles. 
Baboons exist in matriarchal hierarchies in the wild, where the group is organized socially around a dominant female, with subordinates in a pecking order beneath her. The more dominant you are, the more preferential access you get to things like food and perching. We see these behaviors in our animals as well. Daughters of dominant females inherit the dominance of the mothers when they are old enough. In the wild, males leave the group upon reaching sexual maturity and emigrate into another group to breed. Baboons use a variety of facial expressions, gestures, and vocalizations to communicate. The baboons, along with most other non-human primate species, use grooming to maintain social cohesion and make up after fights. Baboons interact with veterinary staff daily and are trained to shift in and out of their enclosures using positive reinforcement training. Our animal trainers and behaviorists reward the animals for doing behavior that is deemed good with treats or toys that the animals like. This method of training works very well with our baboons. Current research using baboons as a model include obesity and diabetes studies, vaccine research for whooping cough, and neurological conditions such as Parkinson's and epilepsy. Rhesus macaques are very similar to baboons. They too are omnivorous and share similar behavior and social structures. There are three common macaque species used in biomedical research, rhesus, cynomologus, and pigtail. Here at the SNPRC, we house around 900 rhesus macaque monkeys. They can weigh up to 20 to 25 pounds and live up to 30 years of age. They come from India, China, and Southeast Asia. Our rhesus colonies are referred to as SPF, or specific pathogen-free, which is important in biomedical research. SPF means free of particular pathogens that could interfere with research and therefore serve as a clean slate for studies. Rhesus monkeys were used in early blood typing research called the RH factor, where scientists were able to determine the positive and negative of blood categorization. Macaques naturally harbor the herpes B virus, a strain of herpes which is deadly to humans. Our staff wear extensive PPE when working with these animals. At Texas Biomed, they are used for researching vaccines and ways to treat HIV, TB, Ebola, and other high containment pathogens and viruses. Common marmosets, or Calithrix jacus, are small-bodied New World monkeys that are endemic to Brazil and South America. These animals have long banded tails with wide ear tufts. Common marmosets are very unique among other primate species. Unlike other primates, these animals have claw-like nails instead of the characteristic flat nails of other primates, including humans. This helps them to cling to and leap between trees in the wild. Marmosets are gumnivores and feed on things like tree sap and insects. These animals are also unique in their reproductive systems. Marmosets have the tendency to give birth to non-identical twins and sometimes triplets. This makes them ideal for studies on maternal health, pregnancy, and newborn comparative health. Marmosets have relatively short lifespans. They can live up to 12 years in the wild and 20 in captivity. This makes them a model well-suited for aging studies in both infectious diseases and non-communicable diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, obesity, and more. As of 2015, chimpanzees are no longer used in biomedical research, as all chimpanzees, even those in research, were deemed endangered by the USDA. Today, Texas Biomed simply houses these chimps in retirement and provides for their daily care. Prior to the endangered designation, chimps were critical to HIV and hepatitis research, which resulted in the development of the Hep C cure and the drugs HIV patients now take to prolong their lives. These animals share 98% of their DNA with humans and can weigh up to 150 pounds or more. Their life expectancy is around 60 years old. Many of SNPRC's chimp caretakers have more than a decade of experience with these chimps and have formed strong bonds with them. All non-human primates at Texas Biomed receive enrichment, which is anything added to the environment that increases psychological well-being and promotes species-typical behavior or behavior that would otherwise be normally exhibited in the wild. They include social, nutritional, physical, sensory, and occupational enrichment. This enrichment is provided in the form of pairing them in social groups 
providing extra fruits, nuts, and grains throughout the day, and encouraging physical activity with swings, perches, and platforms. Our team of animal caretakers also enhance the sights, sounds, and smells around them and keep them mentally occupied with puzzle devices. Along the way, they're rewarded with treats. The SNPRC employs special animal behaviorists to carefully monitor all of the animal's behaviors and takes careful notes of an animal to see if they are interacting in a species-appropriate manner and that social housing is adequate and that the animals are getting along. SNPRC also has veterinarians, veterinary technicians, and animal caretakers, all of whom have the privilege to work with these animals every day. They feed them, make sure their cages are clean, administer medicines if they are sick, and maintain their general well-being. So, now that you've had a chance to take a quick peek inside our campus, we hope you're able to come see us in person at some point. We love sharing our work with the community. Science saves lives, and research is a critical component to protecting human health. Scientists predict by 2050, infectious diseases will become the number one cause of death in the world, overtaking cancer, heart disease, stroke, and Alzheimer's. Texas Biomedical Research Institute is uniquely positioned to become a world leader in eradicating infectious diseases, and our leading-edge scientists have the track record to prove it. They have guided breakthroughs in basic research that have led to a cure for hepatitis C and a vaccine for hepatitis B. Their research is crucial to the advancement in therapeutics in the fight against AIDS, TB, malaria, and Ebola. Texas Biomed scientists continue to develop new animal models critical for testing therapies and vaccines that are in use today, as well as discovering and sharing critical breakthroughs needed to help protect everyone from the growing threat of infectious diseases. With our scientists, our animals, our facilities, and our passion, we can truly change the world. For more information about our scientists and current projects, please visit our website at www.txbiomed.org.